Hi guys, Mr. Jaeger here, and welcome back to Rome 2. So, obviously, the world is not in a good state right now, and things are happening at probably a faster rate than most people anticipate. But we're not going to talk about that, we're not going to care about that, because today we're going to start a new sort of intermediate campaign, and I thought I'd go back to some of my roots, some of these things I enjoy doing the most when it comes to this channel. And that is to play a Total Horse style game, and somehow accomplish objectives. And bitch and moan about certain things as well, but you know. And laugh manically, apparently, is also a thing of mine. Um, who knows? At least, I, I guarantee you at least once I'm going to do that. So anyway, this is Rome 2 with a Divide et Impera mod. Uh, I'll go into further details about the mod as, it, as and when we get certain details. But suffice it to say, this improves the realism and the difficulty of the game. But in a more real, you know... It, it makes the game harder in a realistic-like faction rather than a game-like faction. There we go. Or fashion, if the words want to come out my mouth correctly. So, I've played loads of campaigns on Rome 2. Uh, I've played mostly as a faction that is civilized and is internal. I've either played factions like Rome, Sparta, though I have played the occasional Swaby. But generally, it's always within the inner sections of Europe. And today, I thought, let's try and play something a little different. Not quite different, but different enough. And play RK Bosphorus. Um, they are kind of a, like a half-breed. They're like half-Greek, half-barbarian. And the access to unit poll means that I can still enjoy certain aspects of their Greekness. But I also get the benefits of being a slight barbarian, which is pretty cool. Uh, now, the interesting thing about uh, Divide et Impera is that the game mod developer actually tells you not to increase the difficulty because it basically it fucks with the stats and makes it even more difficult than it needs to be. And that's where the difficulty becomes very gamey. You can do it if you want, but um, it, trust me, we're going to find that it's going to be just as difficult to play on normal as anything else. Um, and then everyone left because they thought I was lying. Um, I'm not lying. Anyway, uh, so... Divided Impera, as in, as said previously, just for an extra long thing whilst we're waiting for the mod to develop, um, kind of takes loads of things of Rome 2 and improves upon it. Some argue that this is what Rome 2 should be uh, from launch. Like, this is what Rome 2 should have been uh, since the game came out. Now, I am a little in favor of that ideology, but I also am in favor of the other ideology um, that, you know, it would be a game that would be a bitch to learn for nodes of new people, and I think it wouldn't have done as well. Um, but there are consequences to serve it. Nice. Uh, but no, like, this game, yeah, th this game is, in my opinion, far better with this mod. Uh, but I also understand the arguments made by people saying that Divide and Impera is more complicated than it needs to be for a game that simply is the sequel to whatever. So it's it swings and roundabouts. It's what you personally uh, probably find to be enjoyable. This is barbarian country, the natives known for war and human sacrifice. Despite this, your people have prospered here, but success has earned you enemies. The Serakis to the east remain hostile to your presence. Strike soon while they remain preoccupied with their war against the Orsoi. You are at peace with the Scythians to the north, but they are untrustworthy and must be neutralized one way or another. To the south lies open water, your dominance of which is challenged by the great kingdom of Pontus. Your war with them is ongoing, but once they are beaten, the sea will be yours to command. History shall record the rise of Cimmeria. All right. So, we begin. So the objective for this particular campaign is, again, not a huge one, is basically I'd like to have territory all around the Black Sea. Um, so basically, we surround the Black Sea. Maybe we take um, Turkey. You know, the Black Sea and a bit of Turkey. Who knows? Um, and then I'd say that would be what I would call as a campaign success. 
uh, in that regard. So the interesting thing about the Arcade Bosphorus is we actually start with our own province as well, which is nice. Like a full-on, you know, full-on province with a bunch of uh, benefits and other stuff, which is actually pretty darn cool. Downside is we have no tech... Oh, actually, we do have some technologies. Just not a huge bunch. Civilian-wise, we're all good, but, you know, apart from military, which we kind of need <laughs> a little bit. Uh, so we're going to start researching military stuff first because I love military. Uh, what we're also going to do is we are going to expand our military aspects in this city. And we are going to expand this sector with a farm. And then that's it because we can't afford anything else because everything's super expensive. Buildings, by the way, in this game are very expensive. And the reason for this is because... Well, it's part of an economic mod, which allows us to benefit in... It's kind of a sort of a swings and roundabouts. I've got a couple of um, sub-mods for this particular Divider Tempera, uh, which basically makes the buildings fairly expensive and other sort of other aspects, but then armies are kind of less... Armies are kind of less expensive to recruit, but there's like population tweakings and whatnot. Um, we'll go into further details whilst we do whatever, but basically uh, we've got a 12 turns per year mod, which this game takes into account because buildings take longer to build because of it, instead of it normally. Uh, units also take longer to train, um, depending on the quality of the unit. Some units are like, you know, one turn and that's it. And other units are like four turns, which is fun. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my spy down south to try and discover people to trade with. Um, despite what the game says, we're not actually at war with Pontus or with the... Um, the Ceres, uh, uh they we don't they don't like us, but we're not at war with them. Uh, Greetings, honoured guests. Trade. Ice. I'm gonna trade you with you for with a time. With... Over to the north, we'll you also trade oh. because we do have uh, wine barely. and copper, and which is a valuable commodity. Uh, quite nice. Which is all good. I'm gonna have my my dude go over to yonder. Um. I'm also going to have him seek a wife. Jose. And the missus. Ah, we need money. Well, it's fine. She can she can order, organize something for the next following turn, which is pretty dope. So, in terms of faction and politics-wise, we are, at the moment, respected. I want to kind of push it up to being admired. Um, beloved would be beautiful, but admired is where we kind of want to be on average. Like, I don't really want to go below respected in all honesty just because it makes life so much more fucking difficult uh i'm gonna put you into patrol to try and ensure that we have a decent popularity we start unfortunately in the winter um which as, as with most campaigns and unfortunately that does mean we have certain problems for example popularity the populace they're in, in there they are indifferent to us at the moment but for three turns we're gonna have to deal with about nine public order Turn, and also replenishment rates are being much lower because of it. Also, we lose money from agriculture, which at the moment we're not suffering from because we don't have agriculture, but it still sucks. So, with all that said and done, let us end our first turn. Oh, I forgot the edicts. And also, we can. This is the, the other benefit. Oh, I can apparently import food here. Didn't even notice. Um, this is irritating, but eh. I mean, we could, if we were desperate, like, wait until this turn comes on because 10% is still a lot, but eh. Uh, I can at least um, utilize this as, um, you know, when I want to start recruiting troops, though, at least. But anyway, so that's all said and done. Let us end the turn, and uh, we'll then make a save. So, whilst we're waiting for this end turn sequence to go along, uh, I can explain some aspects towards what makes, in my opinion, Divider of Tempera to be quite awesome to play. Um, in terms of campaign. So, the way that the game works, as uh, the mod works, is, as said, it makes the game more difficult in realistic ways. So, rather than, for example, just have, uh, oh, great power um, things, it's more like there'll be things like cultural affin affinity and actions that you've committed more affect your, d your relations with uh, other factions um, than just simply being the difficulty in the game itself, which is as irritating. Uh, well, the difficulty level is still a factor in this thing. Well, I don't know shit then. Um, I thought that was turned off. That shouldn't be a factor, I'll be honest with you. But there we go. Uh, that's what to do with the public... Hmm. 
Anyway, there goes Mr. Jaeger's confidence in his abilities. Right. Uh, no, something must have updated then since then, but oh well. At your command. Right, cool. You're doing that. Can't really recruit anyone. Um, you are almost. Oh no, Travis Ayers! We've finally detected them. Fantastic. Right. Traps! I know you like to make trades, don't you? I listen if you speak honestly. I do speak honestly, and you With make money words, honestly. You yep, you do. Right, cool. We've got another trade agreement. We're almost at 5.2k, which is fantastic. So, what I'm going to try and do is once we get enough money, hopefully near 10k, we're going to be able to expand. And over in, uh, I'm probably going to put it in Fanagoria. We'll probably try and grab a, um, a uh, I think we're going to try and grab a, uh, oh, yeah, temple. There we go. Magic. Right. Fanagoria, though, we also are going to recruit Spartotis Dignity, whatever the hell his name is. And my dude there. Oh, yes, I forgot. Characters, you, happiness, yes, go. Right, so now we should be fine. Population, yep, they're happy. Cool, you're doing that. I can't recruit you at the moment, but you're fine. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I'd love to start recruiting. Um, but there we go, can't do it. At least we get access to um, um, archers already. Archers are very powerful in this game, they're lovely. Right, okay. That should be fine. My commander over here. Command. He looks pretty dope, to be honest with you. Uh, what's his name? Lagus. Maximus Lagus. The person who everyone blames whenever they go, they lose in certain games. Right, three turns till that happens. Let's end. Uh, but no, so basically the game has less gamey kind of fashions and f aims more for a realistic experience whilst also tempering uh, fun balancing to it. So managing settlements is a little bit more complicated. You have to deal with slaves, you have to deal with other cultures, you have to deal with... Um... Instead of just dealing with other cultures as a, oh, this person's a such and such, debuff, it's more like, well, there's a lot of people coming in, you know, refugees and X, Y, and Z. Which makes the whole experience a lot more enjoyable, unlike in other things where it kind of can become a bit gamey to certain reactions. Like, for example, oh, player is at such and such, must now do this to this. Um, my personal favorite aspect of this... Um, yeah, my personal favorite aspect of such a thing... Yeah, right, let's open you up and turn you into a judge. Um, is the population and army management system. Because what this basically does is, unlike the Total War games where you can apparently have a nation where there's like, you can defeat an army in, like, you can have a massive battle. Uh, to be honest with you, Shogun 2, beautiful example. You can have like a massive series of battles against the Matsuda, and within one to two turns, they've already replenished like three of their armies back up to full strength, no problems whatsoever. And it's like, I did just kill like 17,000 dudes. That would be felt. Um, and in the Divide et Impera mod, that is in fact felt, um, which is a very enjoyable aspect to uh, the Total War, well, to um, Divide et Impera and why I love it so much. Um, it was one of the big sort of draws to me because what it does is it makes battles far more decisive than uh, previous than you previously would think. Um, it can be it can be same it can be for the defensive and offensive sort of battles. And there is, you know, there's a lot more tactics involved with uh, with battles now. It's not just oh run into the middle of the map like unlike in um, let's make Mark one. We'll have the safe save. Um, unlike, for example, in, uh, the Warhammer series where basically you have to just run into the center of the map, the battle lasts about five minutes, and then somehow the enemy just completely falls apart, or you completely fall apart, and then the battle's over. There's, it feels like there's more tactical levels to, more, there's more maneuverability, more tactical levels to it, and I, I just personally love this version of the mod. I like this more than the Warhammer combats. Warhammer, the Warhammer series was fun. Like you know, so the the Southern War, um, the Southern Web series was enjoyable. 
But at the same time, I would not lie, my more enjoyable series was when I was playing as the Spartans. But as always, my eternal luck with this godforsaken game series has always been bad because the fuckers keep updating mods or updating things or Creative Assembly comes up with a new mod launcher which completely fucks over everyone else's stuff. Touch wood, it doesn't happen again. Uh, anyway, uh, let's give my commander-in-chief more dudes to plant first. And yeah, let's give him some bows. So, a quick mention regarding the, pop the popula population system. Uh, you may notice that, for example, instead of it just costing me money to uh, get certain things, I also would take a population hit as well. And depending on the quality of the soldier, for example, this unit is a little bit... Uh, a little bit more well, this units a little bit more rare because it's like a foreigner or something like that they're not too um, worrisome then you've got also the bog standard pleb dude then you've got like more specialized units and then depending uh, and this effect is obviously different for other stuff um, and the more you upgrade certain things the more you can open a certain pools uh, a good example would be say for example the Romans the Romans are pretty much what this system is designed for because you can have the nobles uh, you can have the plebs, you can have the legio, and eventually, d when you obviously expand Rome and you know become the new big faction, uh, you can have you can basically uh, you can you can utilize more of the same more of the population to have higher quality units, and it, it and you know this obviously works against you, know, you as well because enemy forces will become bigger, factions will become more strong, and everything becomes a lot more terrifying. But it's enjoyable because you can royally fuck someone if you're, you know, if you're lucky enough and you can defeat, like, a number of their armies. It takes them an extremely long time to re-recruit all of those troops. And it is oh so satisfying to see that. Right, I'm going to have you run all the way towards, um, have you run all the way through different territories. That is a lot of territory you have, Mr. Ha! Salute, kids! My main man. Oh, if I can get trade with you. I know I'm going to piss off so many other factions. But it's okay. Um, well, technically you're all under their control. So what's... It's the Egyptians I'm kind of worried about. But no, no, no other factions I actually care about. I am honoured to receive you. No! To your erudite arguments and witty quips. We're both Hellenic. <laughs> Look, I'm importing fish, but I make copper. All you're doing is producing grass for your freaking glass. And you're making spiders slaving them. Just give me money. Oh, uh, God. Right. Do I have to do again? Yeah, it looks like I have to do again. Actually, no, I could probably improve the phosphorus. We do. Ah, bagger. Right. Well, we need to make money. At your command. Uh, what's this? Oh, cavalry. Okay. Oh. Yeah, there you go. There's the difference. So that one is the proper hoplite unit from uh, this particular region. Whereas this one is just a bog standard hoplite. So you can see there's a lot of... And this is the one of the, one of the beautiful hoplite we have here. Unfortunately, this fucker is expensive. Um, very expensive, but that's fine. Um, it's, it's okay. Um, I'm gonna go into patrol, try and keep the... No, don't fucking raid it, you pleb. Idiot. <laughs> I'm going to go into patrol. Burn everything in sight. But it's our own territory. I don't care. Uh... Yes, 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 yes. I do want that. I want champions, and I want less uh, time it costs to recruit stuff. It's gonna we're gonna be slightly buggered, but then we um, economically uh, there slightly buggered on the research for economics, which I will be getting. Uh, where is he? Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're going then. Right. Okay. Uh, let us focus now. Try and see if I can move him over to there. We will need to at some point make a move towards the east. I'd like to go for there, but the issue is... Oh, I suppose we could make our way across. It's only this territory we have to worry about. 
I can make moves. I can make troop movements to the other side. Maybe I could transfer some dudes over to uh, Mr. Fanjoria. Uh, but still, it's fine. We can we can make the we can make necessary sacrifices. I'll probably try and recruit some of the snazzier units and then just leave uh, the shittier units with this dude. I mean, he's cool. Don't get me wrong. But we need. Um, if I can ensure peace up in the north, I want to try and expand eastwards first before expanding northwards. Though that said, um, going north would probably be a little easier than going east because then um, we've instantly got another castle-like territory and we've got um, the first real control in the north to you know, be beneficial from. But again, we're working on it. Everything we're talking about is we're working on it. God damn it. Uh, Ready for battle. I don't think that's do for now, is there? Not especially. We could try and make some kind of trade agreement or whatever. That's the thing, isn't it? It's just trying to set up trade and trying to establish ourselves as uh, as a decent sort of thing. What we got? Can you not see? Together, our armies could be nigh invincible. The world. I'll accept. Your non-aggression pact for now, because it basically means that there's no risk of me losing stuff to you in the foreseeable future. If you're at war with the other dudes, though, then eh. Right, politician-wise, you're all good. Affection arises. Ooh, confederation. All in the southern part, of course. And, okay, so that's a little bit more reasonable. I wish that you would be here. Mm -hmm. Hey, Salus kids. I like you. Katpaturka. Katpatuka. Hello, Katpatuka. How are you doing? Are you at war with anyone? Uh, you do not like Pontus. Gotcha. I mean, the Salu, the Salu kids do not like Pontus. I am eager to hear your embassy. Non-aggression pact. It undoubtedly is by the wit and wisdom of Athena herself. Then how about you give me some cash, you dumb freaking spider slavers? Right, let's try and keep the population as happy as possible. More games, please. It costs me money, but it means that I can deal with that, and unfortunately... At least this also improves my loyalty to the things. A little exploitable. Not gonna lie. I can't buy this bucket. Buy the bucket. Right. Uh, it's irritating that it has to be on the north side. It couldn't be on the fucking south side. Still. We shall hopefully be able to improve the population happiness. And the more happy they are, it kind of is a carry-on effect. It's like, the happier they are, the more happy they do things. And blah, 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 blah. Um... Oh, God, I want him to win the glory because he's the guy who needs to go out and do the fighting. But at the same time... Actually, that said, what's our... Uh, mm, see, the problem is they really don't like us. And they are actually kind of chill with us. Um, which is fine, um, I guess. So it's kind of like, really, I should just turn left? Left, of course. Turn right... And focus down there. I might just do that. It sucks, but that's what we're going to have to do. Annoyingly, also, we don't have transport ships. So we're going to suffer some level of attrition de getting this. Which does blow. Uh, I will position my troops in a slightly less shitty position here. And I will recruit some more dudes. Get some more hoplite. So, another thing that you have to be keeping into account, which is another... Thing that I like because again it affects the AI um, is you have to keep your troop supply in effect. Uh, this is noted by whereabouts is it? Organized beast. There you go. Supply. So depending on what kind of uh, 
armies you've got and how big they are and whatever, they will affect your supply, your income, and obviously your population happiness will also be taken into account. So having uh, a giant army leave your territory and start going into someone else's territory, they will need to be kept fed and they will need to be kept in decent supply. And you can buy certain units and other upgrades um, to ensure that your army is able to maintain itself further into field. But obviously, um, as with all things, if you put your army on a long march and don't give them enough supply or have them on a long march for too long and um, they need to get back in time, they will start suffering natural issues of taking um, attrition and other such sort of things. That's why in uh, this particular mod section series, well, in this particular mod, um, you can also buy ships upgrades, or upgrades, uh, ships. Oh, no. No! Wait, Demon's Eponymous, that's, oh, uh, balls. <laughs> why you? Plague is also a very common thing in this game. Because, hey, we're in the ancient times. What's a bathroom? <laughs> you know, a thing that doesn't exist for a large portion of the world. So, um, it doesn't, you know. Right, let us quickly... Uh, is it just... Is it? Is it what I fear it is? Well, I'm still going to give you guys troops. Uh, you... God, you got... Uh, cavalry archers? Nice. Right. All you dudes are there. You make your way towards defending... I want you to move over to defend Tannis. Ready for orders. Um... We've got slingers and other dudes. I kind of want to recruit one more unit of archers. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six of them. I'll recruit one unit of uh, me melee troops and then we can start looking into attacking um, these dudes. It's pretty much just to kill this unit off and be like, problem solved. Um, I could do like the whole subjugate and do whatever thing. Maybe I might have to at some point. Where I released, uh, like, I'll take over the nation and give them the whole business. And then as we progress onwards, we then begin to, uh, do whatever. Lydia, that's a strong nation. You're also at war with, um, them. Maybe if I make peace with welcome, you, trade. Welcome, welcome. Why will you I'm not sorry. be nice to me? I gain only the scorn of the gods and my people. Athena give you wisdom so that you... But you like me. I don't like the Egyptians. No one likes the Egyptians. Well, I, I know loads of people think the Egyptians are cool, but they're just dead people in a fucking triangle. <laughs> it's, just, it's just literally is all that they're worth. You know? <laughs> just imagine, like, someone saying, like, huh, look at this pyramid that's upside, you know, freaking upside down triangle. Hardly impressive. Um, anyway, so once we've recruited this, we should have a decently sized army. Um, able to hopefully tank a lot of stuff. Um, better still, uh, my unit replacement is actually looking pretty damn dope. Oh yeah, mercenaries are super fucking expensive. Like, mercenaries are literally there to be recruited for maybe one or two turns, and then you stop. Because it'll cripple your economy if you have an army of mercenaries. Again, you can improve it, maybe. You could add more troops to it. Blah, 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 blah. But, again, do you want to? Do you want to cripple your nation... Uh, by having loads of mercenaries, or do you want to focus on non-army stuff? It's, it's, again, it's up to you. But still, it's expensive. Now, hopefully we can make a decent alliance with whoever becomes the dominant Greek faction, um, in the old... So though we're going to have to try and be careful when it comes to taking Carth... Uh, yeah, not Carthage. Yes, we're attacking Carthage. That's how far I want to extend this. No, Constantinople. I know it doesn't exist in this game, uh, but I'm not calling it Istanbul, and I like... Uh, and that area is Constantinople for me. Um, whatever the hell that no, name is. Clitim... Oh, Clitimnestra. Okay, Clitim... <laughs> that does not sound normal. Uh, or, you know, easy to pronounce without sounding it, making it... Without it sounding weird, rude, or just silly. Um, My work is done. Right, okay. Pergamon and Bithynia. Okay, I'm going to assume Pergamon is... They're happy with me. 
they're happy with me. Where is the other dude? Bithia. Uh, you guys are a little Be untrusting. Welcome, but may Athena strike us all. Jose. They may not trust me, but they've just made my life a lot easier. Um, who are you boys? You guys look pretty dope, not gonna lie. Uh, you are at war with these dudes. That's fine. I don't like those dudes either. Would you like some trade? No, you don't like me. What about you? Uh, you're at war with those dudes. Would you... A flapping tongue that speaks without wisdom. A flapping tongue that is can easily be turned into a fucking skewer. Right, okay. You boys are more or less ready to go. Let's have you nudge up to the borders. Uh, fuck. We need... We need intel. And the only person who can provide it to me is over here. Uh, shit. No, we do have... We have our champion. So what I'll do is I'll recruit the champion and then we can have him have a little look-see. Uh, we will be on... Ambush? Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll be on ambush and do whatever. You can begin to recruit more troops as well, but we're going to go with primarily militia strength and infantry. Um, uh, give you one of those dudes and then... Maybe some infantry. Again, we're not going too intense on the whole recruitment side of things. Just because, obviously, we intend to do other things. Um, but still. Try and do something along those lines. Right. Um, try and see if we can have a battle before the end of our first episode. And then also we can have a champion, which we can put into our main army as well. Which will be cool. Which will be cool. Uh, right. And then, if we can start making more trade. We just need to make trade with the Seleucids. If we could make trade with these guys, my god. Um, Be welcome. If I can give you a fair arm. Good, that's a very we good Greeks sign. Are a <gasps> <folk. laughs> we speak with wisdom and Yay! <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Oh, beautiful. Hi, Rhodes. I am eager to hear your embassy. <laughs> you speak with wisdom. Of course, no, fuck you. Um, <laughs> just, I ain't a fan of you. Oh, hi. I am eager to hear your embassy. <laughs> yes, all this lovely trade. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Gotta love it. I am the trade slut. Um, all this trade makes my life so much better. So, yes, there we go. That's a major success already. Um, God bless you, Seleucids. I love you. Um, maybe they're earning more money. Maybe I'm earning less money. I don't care. But uh, it's beautiful. We get to make trade relations. We get to improve our name. And I get to establish myself as a decent-ish civilization. We're all good. God bless the RK Bosphorus, eh? <laughs> Only slightly bullshitty. Um... But no, the good thing is, the better we, the more, you know, the more nations we can start trading with and all the other stuff, um, the better quality, like, the thing, the better quality we can get, you know, more money, obviously, the big bonus is the more money we can pull in, but also, um, the better relations we have with our neighbors, and we'll be able to sort of establish ourselves as a proper civilization, rather than just some outlying tribe, you know. We've got to try and bully all the other tribes to be, like, gone, though. Now, the biggest problem with this particular campaign, which is, you know, going to be a factor, is, of course, winter. Winter is a bitch. Um, the need for cavalry. Mm, rally horsemen. Organized supply. Fantastic. Uh, that would be beautiful. Right. You, we need you to go to that person to get dignitaries to help our research going. Uh, faction destroyed. Okay. Oh no, the Pukutaka clan. The Puka Puka. Uh, right. He looks an idiot. He looks kind of cool. Good. Hercules has nothing on me. <laughs> Love the Greek dudes. 
Uh, local province morale for units who say. Really, that should be you. And you should have public order per turn, local province. Actually, truth be told, that probably should be. Um, oh no, he's in a separate party. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, right. We hunger for battle. Sadly, he can't do much at the moment, but that's okay. We only have a few turns to be able to attack him, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> we are also able to recruit more troops, though, which is another benefit. Um, sadly, not loads of them, but at least... Um, oh, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Two high-quality units of that. We've got cavalry archers, though, which is actually quite nice. Um, makes a decent change. Um... Yeah, it actually makes a lovely decent change. So, oh, try and make that push, eh? So, yes, uh, that should be all good. That should be all good. That should be all good. That should be sort of good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Do we have a Minerva? Oh, we have a lot of... Damn it, I would thought that was Minerva for a second. Um, <clears throat> sanitation and research. That's like a big instant. Um... Hellenic culture, sanitation, money, sanitation. Uh, that would actually be pretty dope, I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean, research is probably going to be the big one for me. Me never, me never, me never. God bless me never, she was a great god. Uh, we can also improve these as well, which at some point I should. Uh, just saying. Military war is definitely going to be a factor. Um, probably going to be... Let's see, shipwright. Yeah, we're going to make that into the military wharf. <laughs> I'm just going to be like, yeah, no, let's make that military. At your command. Right. Um, okay, end of turn. <clears throat> Annoyingly. Oh, balls, I forgot about you. Sorry. I need you to start going closer to Rome and other factions now. If we can establish some trading uh, agreements inside, say, Rome, for example, um, should be good. And then we can see how things go. And also, it's nice to see how what the other factions are doing whilst we're doing this campaign, just because I've not really seen too many campaigns which do that. And unlike some content creators who just play the game, who will just watch the game play itself, I actually do something whilst also watching the game play itself, you know? I make stuff and do something myself. Ha ha ha. Quick jest for the win. Go Amelia. Yeah, the Athena, Athena, Athena? I can't pronounce words. Anthea. Anthea, I'm going to say. Uh, or Carthage. Or, or Carthage, yes, that's Carthage. No, um, or Constantinople area. Or Constantinople, whatever. Um, a faction arises. Celtic Confederation. Okay. Uh, Macedonia. Okay, cool. Question. How are you guys with Athens? You are at war with Sparta. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to... Oh. Yeah, you guys are kind of cool. No, I need I need the money. Greetings, friend. Greetings. Extra cash flow. Bring... More money, please. Right. Uh. Okay. Over yonder to the north. You have maybe like one or two turns left. Right. Actually, we need to recruit, don't we? Commander. Yes. Soldiering. Right. One more of these dudes, and I think we'll be in good. We'll be in good shape. At your command. Surprise will be our advantage. You will march till your feet bleed. Right. I think we'll have to start making the push slightly. I mean, we don't like them, and they don't like us, so I'm not exactly annoyed at the whole concept. And the longer we leave them to it, the more likely they are to do stuff. Yeah, five turns till that goes. So, 
there we go. And boop. Nice. Right, okay. Uh, you are to continue uh, westward till we find Rome and Carthage. At the moment, things are kind of just, you know, pushing up rather pleasantly. Um, hopefully, yep, that's that's another benefit as well. Extra tax rate. Uh, early autumn, slightly, uh, yeah, not great. Agriculture is alright, but we're going to need to improve it at some point. I'd like to go for the farm. It's expensive as Christ, but there is some really damn good benefits for having uh, the farm. Going for other factions, go, uh, other factions, going for other stuff. Herding ground is kind of like the second best thing. Um, which is kind of okay, I assume, uh, but really we want to go for this because it just, it makes life so much better. Uh, we can also get this, which is the kind of the, the cheapest of it, um, and it does allow me to ring, to get the recruitment of the baggage train, so that may be a factor if I can recruit a second farm, but for right now, I think we just need to, um, focus on getting the big farm because having food is obviously also a big factor and also it improves our population increase, so... There's multiple benefits for having this thing. It's glorious. Just unfortunately, it's so expensive. I mean, the thing is, once we get to a point of being a relatively powerful civilization, you will be earning the big bucks. It's just the early game, unfortunately. it's Everything's a little slow and everything's a little uh, choppy, to say the least. Quick and aggressive uh, expansion is... A possible a possibility but again um fuck up but once and you're well not even back to the drawing board you're under the drawing board because you're six foot under right let's begin territorial yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <sighs> god damn it what is up with that Fucking town. Show me. At once. Right, there we go. So they have 11 dudes, tribes folk, spearmen, horsemen, archers, and you are recruiting more troops. Really, we do need to lay siege to this place. Yeah, we will. Declaring war. It's a knee jerk war, I admit, but we need to cause problems for it. Uh, it has loads of cavalry. I have loads of infantry. Uh, he also has a whole bunch of archers. Archers. Oh no. Are those archers? I mean, they're all low quality infantry. We have to deal with mostly cavalry stuff, aren't we? If we trap them in the towns and use what archers we've got to try and force them into an unfavorable situation, that'll be fine. <clears throat> yeah. This is not going to be easy, but then again, we are high quality armor, high quality men. Hopefully that should count for something. Here we go. Oh, they've chosen to fight on the field. That's not good. Well, actually, that could be good, depending on how we... F depending on the terrain and everything else, we could be finding ourselves fine. Kind of wish they couldn't sally out into the field almost immediately. Like, I kind of wish that if you went into a siege and then went straight into the attack, um, I don't think... Um, yeah, that might be a better factor. Okay, reinforcements. Where's the town? There's the town. We want to kind of fight on a downward area, so I'd say, yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's set up a defensive position as best as we can. Cavalry will form on the left flank. Uh, you slingers, or. Yeah, you are slingers. Okay, that's good. Right, you three. 
We'll set up behind these dudes and prepare to deal with that. Ah, oh, you're militia. Not, not brilliant, but not too bad. Um, <clears throat> reinforcing. And who are you two? You are just levies. And you, you can tell because there's no organization with you as well. Gotcha. Right, we've got reinforcements then. You are the covering the flanks. Okay, and stop. Horse archers! Right now! I am sure that when our foes have stopped worshipping their sacred pig, or whatever foulness the animal endures in their hands, we shall have a battle. When the time comes, kill your barbarian cleanly and move on. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <clears throat> right, let's have you do a bit of reconnaissance for us, shall you? There's all their defenses set up, so obviously they don't care too much about that. Wait, I think they've already done something. Yeah, that's the I fucked up. Wait, what? What? The deer could be affected? I've never seen that before. I have never in my life seen that before. What the hell? Step, archers! That's incredible. I honestly have never seen that before. Quickly now! Like I've never seen these deers. Like I normally would have thought these deers just run away at the first, you know, like they do here. The first sign of any trouble, they just bugger off. Mountain. I never Mountain. knew they could actually do that. That's pretty hilarious. To be honest with you, I'm half tempted to do, take advantage of um, this weird sort of defensive line um, and kind of force the enemy to attack us from it, but... Warriors eager for blood. I'm trying to figure out where the enemy is. If we can spot where the enemy is coming from, then I think we'll be okay. I'm confident in my abilities to fight in battle, especially if we're facing a load of archers, sorry, of a whole of cavalry. But I am, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm cocky and say, "Oh yeah, this is gonna be easy." They're just barbarians. No, they're not. Every battle you have to treat with the highest level of respect. If you want to win every battle, you just focus on it. Bingo. Light supply baggage, you say. Completely nothing. Oh! We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Yep, we've discovered them, alright. These guys pretty much live off fucking missile cavalry, correct? Yep, we do. They are. Well played. Well played. Riders forward. It's a lot of archers. Stepped units. There's their infantry. Spearmen, cavalry, spearmen, archers. They're literally just archer spam. What we got, tribesfolk? Just spearmen without even shields? No shields at all. Damn, okay. That's good. Really, these guys are the big problem. Cavalry archers. Oh, we have to attack them, right? That sucks. And then again, it could work in our favor. If we pick one unit at a time off. It might be work. It might work. It, it might work. Right. Ready. 
What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and nudge this army. Um... Yeah, we're going to try and nudge this army and try and kind of... Uh, oh yeah, I can use these things now, can't I? Try and move this army around here. Mainly the archers, perhaps. Um, and kind of target... Target individual uh, units and kind of reduce their archer supremacy as much as humanly possible. I mean, obviously, if we can target the cavalry archers, that would be nice. But obviously, I'm acutely aware of the fact that that could be a problem. What I don't want to do is I don't want to send units chasing after one group of cavalry while, like, three others are able to freely open up on this thing. The biggest issue right now is archer supremacy. They have it. We don't. Um, our units are very limited in what they can do, but the difference is, I hope, uh, our armor isn't honestly that great in comparison to some other units' armor, um, <clears throat> that the missile supremacy that we have, or the missiles that we have, will be enough to be able to reduce their missile advantage by a significant portion. I mean, the fact that they've got them all set up in a weird sort of line like this with their defenses will also hopefully result in them being unable to really react to certain things, is the plan. And the fact that I went into um, rain version uh, of the map is a hope that they'll constantly be trying to run around and stuff, get tired, run away, and uh, basically are more susceptible to death. Looks like they're going to do that whole, their entire line thing. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will react by putting our army lovely and out into the open. Like a big old target. We are risking a bit though, considering that we won't have any kind of archer support if they should decide to push them. Armies twitch around a bit. Are they coming? Yeah, they're coming. Really, we want to be aggressive. Be aggressive. Step, archer. Missiles ready and waiting. Quick march, general. Ready. Up, warriors, move out. Orders. Orders understood. Ready. Stepped horsemen. Ready. Ready. Finish up. Ready. Orders. Yes, orders. Try and get these dudes to withdraw a bit. <clears throat> right, charge. Ready. Punch a hole. Go up. Alright, they're withdrawing. Good. You boys, concentrate fire on those dudes. This is going to be difficult and we're going to take casualties, but the hope is that we can just keep charging at them. Missile defense up, yes. And the big pike men are going to be taking the ship. Step, 
That's their cavalry archers, and they're getting fucking slammed. Good shit. You're just cavalry archers. You don't know shit. Leaving our best dudes till last. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Hold the line. Get involved. Get caught in. Beautiful. Right, you boys start making a push. Concentrate fire. That's fine. You guys are fucked. Push center line. They just try and cloak. Trigger your own traps, you bitch. We can do some attacks. Our general is under attack. We can have the rally ability as well. Right. Yeah, that right hand flank's not gonna last too long. Right. Hold the line. Keep 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 the line. Boom! Rally, good shit. Punch a hole straight through. Right, right side. You three, right side, get ready. You on the left side. Right, you attack them on the flanks. You, midsection, go. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. These guys will hopefully route fairly soon. They're all archers over there, which is bad. To take some damage, but if we can route their main infantry component, that'll be beautiful. Right, you, right side, go. These guys are going to start routing fairly soon. Charge into that. You boys engage those cavalry dudes. You boys engage those dudes, relieve them a little bit of pressure. Second, that's not good. Right. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Ready. To God's guide our shots. Riders in bed. At your service. Good. 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 Right. Keep breaking through. Keep breaking through. Keep breaking through. Go. 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 The only reason why these guys are routing a bit now is because these archers are causing them problems. Pop him. And charge. Charge, charge, charge. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Unfortunately, these militia poplites and all that jazz, they're not exactly great for um, beauty, route, perfect. That's it. Encroach on their flanks. Encroach on their flanks. Keep pushing. Who, what, and how? Who is routing? I will find the fuckers responsible. Oh, it's the levy. No, the levy hasn't routed at all. Who was routing? Right, they're in the shit a bit. Go try and squeeze them a bit. These guys are going down slowly, but unfortunately, right, they're running out of luck. They're, they're feeling the pain. Right, you boys kind of get into position. Their leader goes down. That would be lovely. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Judge. 
Commander! Ready! General! To Orders. Really? Come on, guys. You can do it. I know you're on the flanks. Ah, oh, fuck hell. Archers! Come on, we're so close. We can route them. I'm feeling them wanting to go. Come on, left side, left side. Come on. Inspire, there we go. Perfect, those slingers have broken through. Now we can begin squeezing this. We just need to chunk this left flank and they're gone. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're fucking barbarians. Good. You focus through. Focus through. Focus through. Focus through. Oh, we kill those dudes. There, there go. That's it. Bye bye. Yours to command. Forward. Swing on. Ready and waiting. More pressure on those spearmen. Pike men ready for orders. General. Parfleters ready. Gone. Gone. Beauty. About. Turn to a face them. We've won the left flank for now. That's the important thing. We cause more routes in the battle. We lost the entire left. Yeah, more or less. Right, move. Cavalry, go hunt them down. Those spearmen must not be allowed to return. We lost one of the other dudes already. This is definitely going to be one of those tight ones. You've got to try and get rid of those dudes as much as fucking possible. Knocking out that cavalry is going to be a bitch, but if we can do it, we can route a load of them. Right. Come on, do it. Do it. Say the charge. Come on, say it. There you go. Love that version. Right, you're gone. Good. Good shit. Good shit. They gone. Commander, our men flee the field of battle. Oh, good. This is a shameful display. We got a pincer their commander. Grab their commander. Get them. Do not allow their commander just to slip through your fingers. Come on, he's a cavalry. Your spears. You know, spears beat cavalry. Right, cause more routes. They're routing. Good. Baggage train is routing at least. It's irritating that the enemy have the ability to do that bullshit, but okay. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Try and spook these fuckers off. If we can force their infantry to fuck off, um, the strongest ability of the uh, uh, that face disengage from them. This is a shameful display. And the fact that we're losing this battle because these wankers will not give up and the enemy can just run around in circles. You got him? Good. Right. Concentrate center defense. I think it's a bit bullshit that the enemy has this freedom to do such bullshitty things like running through an entire fucking line. 
It's a little annoying. Like, that kind of shit shouldn't be allowed to happen. Do like a cavalry shot. Come on. Pikes ready. Finish up. At the double. Oblige's ready. At the double. We've got to try and caught, catch this fucker on his ass. Charge thing, maybe break them. They're close. They've got to be close. That's it, they're gone. Those infantrymen are gone. The battle is turning in our favor. They've got to be close. Right, that infantry unit is gone. We've won that position. Now run to the right. Go support. Break off. Lure those fuckers to the line. Force archers, go spook off their archers. Yes! There's the bit I wanted to hear. That's the news that beauty that says everything. Hold the line. I think we've done it. I think we've done it. By the gods, we only just did it, but fucking hell, we did it. All it took was that wanker going down, and we did it. Yes! Ah, oh, that was close. Right, about face. Still a tiny bit more work to do. Now we've got to kill these fucks. We've eliminated a, a threat, though. And our man have def definitely won the day, though it was bloody knife's edge. We've suffered heavy casualties for this town, and by God, we'll need to keep it for a time. But yeah, we did it. We actually did it. Well fucking done, lads. Well fucking done. <sighs> Jesus. Yeah, well, a little bit. Yeah, we definitely suffered more losses than they did. Well, no, we didn't actually. We killed more of them. I think the army composition I had was not very good. Yep. Um, I definitely lost a lot of fucking troops, though. Definitely lost a lot of troops. That kind of shit we can't really afford to do in future battles. But for the time being, we have beaten them back and successfully claimed a glorious sector. Look at the amount of kills the arch cow horse cow archers did. Beautiful. Actually beautiful. I think I'm glad I went with uh, infantry for my general. Like, he, he's not really supposed to... Normally in some games, you kind of keep your generals back because you don't want them getting killed, obviously. But um, in this game, there is a little bit of a freedom when it comes to your generals. And oh my god, the freedom there. Oh, But there we go. We have successfully destroyed the Pyrrhic victory. We lost a couple of units, but they lost their entire capital, and I am occupying this settlement. That is a glorious victory. And they're destroyed. Uh... Yeah, I'm off the field, and you are very expensive. You know what? 7,000. Fuck. Commander. At least I can... Oh, not enough manpower. Well, shit. Uh, at least we can get replenishment. <sighs> at least we can get replenishment. So, there we go. Our first conquering in our campaign. A bit of a bloodthirsty battle, admittedly, but I think one that was necessary to set the set the scene, if you will. 
These are the step lands. These bastards are going to make us pay for every inch in blood. And we definitely need to ensure that such things are kept and earned. But we're on to a good one already with the conversion. Well, I'll try and convert this place as soon as possible. Uh, but no, the good thing is at least um, we have established trade relations with most people. Uh, we're beginning to discover different factions. And I mean, we need to probably go like here. Should, yeah. And better still, we'll be able to start seeing the true benefits of expanding our, cell, uh, expanding our horizons and all that jazz. But our main objective, as always, is to ensure the total encirclement of the Black Sea. I should probably be in red. The Black Sea. And uh, maybe grab Turkey. Maybe. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you like this kind of content, let me know in the comment section down below, clicking on the like button, and of course subscribing to the channel. I'll be going into further details as for the reason why this particular series is going to be coming up in a more... In a channel update I intend to probably upload today. So you guys probably have seen that before you'll see this. Uh, but I think it's kind of uh, it's kind of important regarding what's going on. So yeah, uh, here we are, and where well, pretty much we'll uh, hope to see you in the next one. This is Mr. Yeager, signing out.